Okay, here we go again. Just wanted to start this again. I'm sorry, uh, we tried a while ago and there was a problem logging in. So, uh, my name is Russell Bryant with Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Native American Group. I am the training administrator for the group and part of Nuga Rivera's team. Just want to go back on and show you that uh, we're on Google Plus Hangouts. For those of you that were invited to join and did not join, you can always join on our Google Plus Hangouts every other Thursday starting at 1030. So no one's in that hangout right now, so I'm going to go ahead and close that down and continue the training on using your greenhouse to work more effectively for you to bring in <clears throat> buyer and seller leads. I do apologize about my voice. I'm a little under the weather. So with any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start the actual training. <clears throat> You're going to log into your greenhouse like you normally would, the www.mybhgr e Oh, sorry, my bhggreenhouse.com. And once you're there, you're going to log in like you normally would with your username and password, which hopefully I have corrected my issue with. <clears throat> and from there, you should be getting this familiar looking portion of the site that uh, you've seen many many times before uh, basically it's your login it's going to give you uh, just simple things like um, you got some training videos here that have loaded <clears throat> you've also got any new contacts you've got from your website messages from those contacts your listings should automatically populate here your office listings all of these things will all show here uh, training classes, things of that nature are all in this area. So the first thing you want to do to make sure that your site is completely set up correctly is to go into your profiles right up here at the top right. <clears throat> Once you've gotten into your profiles and that loads up, you've got two separate profiles here that you need to work on. One of them is your Better Homes and Gardens profile over here to the right. This one includes your picture, your about me designations, awards, recognitions, things of that nature that need to go onto the Better Homes and Gardens website. This is where people will search for you as a uh, business partner. It's got to be available for them to find. So that's actually where you go in here. You can choose any languages you speak, any awards you have, areas of specialization, your about me details. All of that needs to be completely filled out so that when people are searching on the Better Homes and Gardens real estate master site, they have the opportunity to choose you as an agent they'd like to work with. Uh, obviously, if you speak more than one language, you want to put that on there. If there's any awards or recognitions that you have, you want to put those in there as well. Then, of course, you want to upload a photo because people want to know who they're talking to, who they're working with. And in addition to that, your links. So things like your social media links, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Flickr account, if you have that. Any additional links you have as well, you'd like to add that into the bottom portion of the site and make sure that that's completely filled out. So once you've got all of that done, you simply save it. And actually, it won't let you go through the process to click on another tab without saving after each individual update. <clears throat> so make sure you're taking care of that, saving it between each one. And of course, once you're done, just go back up to the top, go back to your profiles again. Obviously, if there's any changes that you cannot make, you're going to have to talk to your office manager to have them come and make those changes for you as well. The secondary portion in order to make this work better for you is your contact manager profile. And this is actually through your website, your agent website, the BHR, BHGRE website that you're given for free. Now remember, there are two different versions of that site. There's a free version that you're given to utilize to your best interest. And then there's an IDX fed version for $50 a month. The IDX fed version is going to give your clients the opportunity to, to log into a website that's linked directly to you. And from that point forward, be able to search for homes. A non-IDX space is simply going to give you basically an area for you to capture leads and things of that nature. It may also show the listings for your particular brokerage, but it's not going to show everyone's brokerage listings for you to be able to feed off of. So obviously, hands down, for the $50 a month, which is minimal compared to what some people pay for a website, it's well worth it to have that upgrade in place and to utilize your website and really make it work better for you. The other additional thing you're going to get with that is the opportunity to be able to track where your leads are coming from, which you won't be able to do with the standard website that comes for free. So I just have mine set up, so I apologize. Um, we've already taken care of that. I finally just got complete just a few days ago, so there may still be some things in here that I need to tweak. But when you log in, this is the most important thing here, your screen. 
you want to make sure that all of your profile content is correct. Uh, make sure that it's filled out completely. You can simply click on it and you should have a drop down that comes down and you can scroll down to edit and you can actually go in here and fix any of this. You can change any of this verbiage, any of the wording. You can change this additional info that's here on your main page of your site. You can add awards and certificates. And then of course again you have your social media links where you can link people back to your Facebook, your Google Plus, if you have a blog, if you have a Pinterest, a Twitter, or a YouTube account. And you can add additional social medias there. You also have your areas for your pictures that you can upload. So you want to make sure that you've got those completely in here. Um, you want to add your agent MLS ID, which apparently I have not. So we're going to try to click this and see if it will let me add that in. Well, it's not right now, but that's okay. You see you've got your primary website image, your marketing image, your marketing logo, and if you have a bulk mail permit, you can stick that there as well. So just long story short, you want to make sure you've got something in every area. Additional info here, I believe that's where I have my video uploaded, so that should automatically populate over. But you're going to click through each one of these settings tabs and make sure that everything is correct on here. Make sure that your time zones are correct, contacts to be able to be deleted, Make sure you set up your alerts correctly so that they're coming to your phone and your email so that when you do get a new client, you can actually follow up with that client as quickly as possible. Your MLS administration, just make sure that everything's correct there. This is where you actually can work on the orders that you may have, print orders, things of that nature. It actually keeps a track of it so that you can go back and print those invoices out later if you want to compare them for billing and things of that nature. And then, of course, your billing information for your actual account that goes on that you can actually be tracked out for your expenditures. Each single tab here needs to be worked on and played with. Your email signature line should be clear and easy to read and concise. It should have all of your information so that your clients don't have a hard time getting back in touch with you. It can also include, include something like your call to action, a video link, something that really will drive that person back to you in order to gain that return business. Um, message templates, I always recommend creating some new message templates besides what's already there so that you have an actual template that you can go back into at will and easily send it out from your phone. Personally, I recommend one that definitely says I'm out in the field with a client right now, either showing homes or writing contracts. However, uh, speaking with you is very important to me. I would love to set up a time that you and I can get together from possibly coffee or something of that nature and really sit down face to face and address your needs and your expectations from me as an agent. That's a great way to follow up with someone when you're out in the field without making a personal phone call. You can also make a quick text on your phone that says the same thing so that at least you can follow up with them by both methods of communication instantly because today's consumer is looking for just that. They want instant service, instant gratification, and an instant agent. And of course, they always want to feel like they're the only one you're working with. So this is a great way to do that. Create templates that you can easily send out right from your phone in the middle of field, in the middle of the field if you're showing homes, and also create something on your phone as well, like a short text code that you can put in that will automatically uh, fill in the other information to respond to them via text. Obviously, once you're done with it, you're going to always save it. Now, your welcome email, it may be um, an automatically populated one from the site. I recommend you read through that and ensure that it's exactly what you want your clients to see. Otherwise, tweak it and make it like you want it. Make sure you save it when you're done. <clears throat> also, you do have one if you manually enter people on the site. There's actually two. One if they register through one of your links and one if you manually enter them on the site. So you want to go through this as well. Make sure that everything that's there is conducive to your business. Make sure that it meets the uh, expectations that you're trying to serve your clients with. And... Um, Make sure that you can follow through on anything that's there. The last thing you want to do is for it to say that you're going to send them a CMA and then you don't send them a CMA. It definitely blows the whistle and lets them know that there is not a live person back there, that there's some automated site stuff going on. And that's the last thing anyone wants to be part of right now. So you have a listing alert campaign and kind of this just goes through the drip of the campaign when you sign someone up on a listing alert. Again, you want to go through this section and you want to tweak it and make sure that it's going to meet the needs of your clients and help them understand better the expectations that both of you have for each other. Same thing here. Once you make the changes, you want to make sure you save it each time. Once you've saved it each time, you want to make sure you go back through, make sure all your saved changes have taken place. On the seller's market report, 
Same thing here. This is if you're going to do basically a CMA for someone's home. This is what's going to come with that report if you send it to them, or if they click on the link on your website, they request one. This is what's going to happen. They're going to get this automated message, and then you're going to follow up with them. IMAP credentials. You really don't want to play with this stuff. This is uh, if you have an Outlook or a smartphone and you're receiving CRM emails. Uh, if you want more information on that, I recommend setting that up directly with the market leader people. The next tab is your website tab, and this kind of just basically covers the gamut of what's on your website. So you have a welcome page. On that welcome page, you've also got um, your basic information here that tells you, you know, how to sign up. Um, you know, they're all broken down right here. So your home page will show you, you know, what the information is that you have there. Your long search keywords, your short search keywords, things of that nature. The words that it's going to automatically find when it's searching on SEO or search engine optimization that are going to lead your page to be at the top of someone's search results. You can go through here and play with this. You've got a main cell text. You've got, I'm sorry, main text when people come to your page. This is where my video is. You have cell text. You have site images. You have a search widget that you can put on other pages if you'd like to drive traffic to your site, like on a blog. Your communities that are served pages. Any feature providers that you work with on the pro level, you may add those back on. Now this is a great way for you to actually have pro at no cost to yourself and that's actually to basically sublet your website out. So you can ask your future providers, say for instance your mortgage company or your home inspector or your title or escrow company to supply you with the $50 per month in order to be part of your site. So they would be a preferred uh, recommended partner that would be on your site continuously changing and with their information and contact information there and then in the return for that you would obviously send them uh, people and people would be able to be uh, be able to contact them through your website. So that's a great way to offset that. You can actually get maybe two, three, or four together. And actually, if you have four and you're thinking about it, you're talking about a little less than um, basically $15 a month uh, for them to be able to uh, be a part of your website and to offset the cost to you for paying for the $50 a month plan. So that's a great way to get them in that. Remember, if you do do that, put them in a contract, make sure you hold them to it, get that 12 months. Let them pay up front if they'd like, maybe you can get a discount, or let them pay monthly if you don't mind tracking them down for that check. So this is a great way to get that paid for in full for you. Um, listing address, um, this is actually for the homes that if you want to display listing addresses when people are searching or leave them kind of incognito. The listing search areas, allow them to search for all areas is what I normally do. The fields, we generally want to leave the majority of the fields on. Um, I do take off mobile or manufacturer because there's not really that much of that in our area. So beyond that, your recommendations, if there's any recommendations you have. Um, and then you have a custom page area. And this could be anything. Most people use this for the testimonial page. It's a great way for you to get testimonials back from your clients and kind of have a page for people to go back to and look at those areas of interest. See if anybody really resonates with them. Um, you know, and make sure that, that your testimonials are there. Uh, obviously, proofread your testimonials and make sure before you publish them that you do have the permission of the person who is submitting it for you. And, uh, you know, use it to your best interest. Leverage off of that. So site activity, that's one of the things that you get with the, uh, with the standard account. And basically, this is just going to show you where your leads are coming from, where your contacts are coming from over the course of the last six months. And you can break it down. A little bit more finitely to three months or even the year. But this is showing you what's working best for you. So, network sites, personal marketing, market leader, lead router, or advertising. And it'll actually give you a, a graph here showing you what's working best for you. Here as well, you can kind of break it down even further. So, yesterday you can see that I had 27 visitors come in from my personal marketing and seven from my market leader account. And you can even break that down further and see what exactly is creating this marketing. It's getting people to me. So this is offline marketing that's getting people to me. So this could be my business card being handed out or something to that extent. Search links yesterday. There's none. Let's see for this week what people were searching for. So nothing again. So all these people are generally people that have already been on my site. They're just coming back in and funneling back to the site. This portion of the website analytics does not come free with your site. This is part of the upgraded version. And this is probably the the biggest um, and most important part I think of the site and that's finding out where your leads are coming from what they're searching for and how they're getting there and uh, giving you the opportunity to really take that information and run with it uh, to a greater level so 
if we're looking here on the launch pad, it's just showing like yesterday, for some reason, I had 171 page views. So 171 page views on my site yesterday. If I scroll down, I can see kind of um, where these people are coming in at, the traffic sources. The majority of them are referral links that I was getting for yesterday. If I expand this out and actually go, should be able to go for, let's see. Oh, no, we're right. Go back to analytics. I apologize. So, <clears throat> if I actually click on the header, it's going to open up the actual category and let me expound on that. So you can actually go here and say, for the last seven days, what's the majority of my business been coming from for my website? And let it load up. And you can see on Thursday, there was about 50% type in traffic, 25% was from search engine, and 25% from links or referrals. Now, Friday, obviously, I posted something on to uh, Facebook or somewhere that led people to me, 25% from there, 50% from my type in, and 25% from here. Now, Saturday, obviously, I was lazy and I slept in, so 100% of my web traffic actually came from search engine optimization. Sunday, evidently, everybody slept in. There's nothing there. And then you can see how it kind of just continues to go up and down. You can actually track where your stuff is coming from. You can track averages to your website and see where your average visits are coming in. What days are your most popular? And from there, kind of go forward. You can actually see what hours people are logging into your website to view pages. This is great. So if you're seeing that you're having a high influx of traffic between 12 to 3, then maybe that's the time you need to be really, um, you know, making sure that you're available for calls and things of that nature. See when people are active, and from there, make sure that you're following up with them. You know, obviously, there's no one up between 12 and 8 for some reason. Everyone wants to sleep. A couple people at 3 a.m. But beyond that, these are your high traffic times to so be available. It's just like running a store or a business of any other kind. Be available to your customers during the times that they're shopping with you. Now, going over your traffic sources, again, this is giving me exactly where they're coming in from. And then a breakdown for the entire week right here. So I can see exactly where my business is being funneled into me from. You can do IP searches if you want to get that down and dirty and find out exactly where each single visitor is coming from. You can have a visitor activity report, which shows you exactly what each person is looking at. The page counts, all of the above is right there. And then you have, of course, back to your summary page. It gives you an average time that a client is actually on your page. So over average for the week, uh, my average page visitation, sorry about that, was 5 minutes and 23 seconds, which is a pretty good length of time on the page. And then I've got 52% return visitors and 48% new visitors. That's kind of where you want to stay at. Your return visitors should be a little bit higher, but we do know that some people are just kicking the tires. They're not always looking to buy right now. So, going back, popular pages. This is another great way to find out what pages your people are looking at. So, the majority of them are looking at my home page. You can see also here that they're looking at properties under 250 single family homes and from there we go down and we can kind of see the whole breakdown of every single thing that they've looked at one of the cool things that I love about it is being able to check where people are viewing you from so maybe you say for instance you know uh, you you uh, you're trying to find out where your base clientele are coming from so for me right now, you can see the majority of my clientele are definitely coming from Virginia. I had 246 visitors from Virginia over the past week, but I also have some visitors coming in from Pennsylvania. Now if I widen this search and go back over the last 30 days, it's going to change. And you see I've got one in Oregon, three in Michigan, 22 in Pennsylvania. You also have the capacity to go ahead and break down by top cities. The majority of my clients are coming from Virginia Beach. That's good. That's where I want to work them from. And then Barsomville, which I've never heard of. Obviously, I've got 84 page views from there that I didn't even know about. Fredericksburg, Norfolk, and then it breaks it down. So I can see where my marketing dollars are really working for me and making it worth my while. Now, we can also drop down and go to other countries and actually see if you're getting any page views from another country. So right now, everything I'm getting is coming from the U.S. But 
if I was getting page views from other otherwise areas, they would show up as well on that. Okay, so this is showing me right now. Logged in here if you wanted to get a live status. Your city detail is just, again, a, a better breakdown of who is visiting you from what cities. It's basically like the top 15 is what you're going to get there to show you what's going on. The performance evaluator, this is kind of fun, and mine should be off a little bit right now because I haven't really been able to access my site because it was down because of market leaders transfer over. So the performance evaluator will basically judge your performance of how well you're following up with your clients. For some reason, it's not wanting to load right now. That's how good I did. So good it's not even loading. But it will basically break down and tell you your average uh, follow-up rating, you know, how quickly you're following up with people, how many people are unsubscribing, drip campaigns and things of that nature, and just help you better tweak the way that you're working your site. Then, of course, your leads. This is if you're bringing in leads from third-party vendors, like if you, um, if you have a targeted thing with Market Leader. If you have a Trulia account, you can link your email addresses, Trulia, Realtor.com, and Zillow to automatically funnel those leads here instead of keeping them in that secondary site. So it kind of helps you better prepare yourself for all your leads. Keep them in one particular portal so that you're not working on five different portals at the same time and access them easily from no matter where you are. So that's pretty much how this portion of the site works. I wanted to go back to our actual website and do that <clears throat> and show you really quickly how you can draw some leads to your site. So if we're at our site and we go on to website. Click the your home page. So mine is www.vbrealestatepro.com. So if you go to my website, this is what you're going to see. You see this great little, there's my preferred uh, service provider. And they'll, they'll click through the, all four of them are there. Uh, you can see more listings here. You can see all of my listings that are currently available. You can search particular neighborhoods and things of that nature. So this is what I like to do from time to time. I like to go ahead and open up a Facebook tab and get that ready to roll and this is how I'm going to drive some business to myself today we're not going to post Craigslist ads we're not going to do all of that today I'll show you a little bit more about that later but just for today let's just uh, put some feelers out there and um, you know bring in some people who are looking for some great homes and typically like today it's very cold it's the winter time we want to make sure that um, that we're going to you know reach people where they are. So the majority of people right now, um, you know, they're trying to think it's freezing outside. Maybe they're looking for a home that's got a beautiful waterfront view with, you know, a lot of sun, something like that. So let's just pretend we're on our site just like you would do if you were on your own site. And without clicking anything else, we're going to enter a neighborhood. And one of my favorite neighborhoods particularly is uh, Allen, Allenton. So let's put in Allenton. Well, we need to do Virginia Beach first. Let's see Virginia Beach. I'm going to say yes. And we're going to go to more options. And we're going to enter a neighborhood in Virginia Beach. So we're going to say subdivision down here. Allenton. And we're going to look. Let's just see whatever is available in Allenton. So we're going to search. Just like a client would if they were to go onto our website. Got to put it in a city. Sorry about that. All righty. All right. So we've got 12 homes right now for sale in Allenton. Now, if you click on two of these homes, it's going to do the same thing it would with a normal client. It's going to ask them to register. If you click on just a few, you can do this throughout the day without asking for registration. So I always recommend finding some that you like, kind of working with it. Um, let's see if we can find one that's really, uh, really nice. Well, all of them are really nice. Uh, let's see what's on page two. We'll go back to page one. 
this is a, a great picture. So let's let's go with that one. The one on Duke of Windsor Road. So we're just going to click the link and bring up the information screen. All I'm simply going to do is I'm going to kind of maybe browse the pictures. I'm not going to go too far into the home because it's going to ask us to register. Okay. We're going to click on the link up here in the address bar. We're going to right click it. We're going to copy it. We're going to go onto our Facebook and we're going to say On a cold rainy day, oh, let's say winter, it's not rainy day, there's nothing better than sipping some hot coffee with a view like this one. Call me today to arrange your private viewing. Right after that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to paste in our link that we just copied. We're going to wait for that link to populate. Once it populates, then we have the actual full ad there. Now, I just said something about a view, so I want to try to show off that view. That's a good one right there. We're going to get to the thumbnails, make sure we've got a good one that we like. So that's the only view we've got that actually populated. So let's go with that one. To make us look like we know what we're doing, we're going to take this link right back out because we've already gotten the link into the actual post. And we're just going to simply post it. And what's going to happen is this is going to populate like this. When someone comes into my Facebook and they see this in my feed, they're going to click it. Maybe they're going to look at a couple more homes as well. By the time they look at that second home, I'm going to get myself a lead. And I did nothing but a quick and easy post on Facebook. Now, you don't want your Facebook to be filled up with tons of posts. But imagine if you just simply did this with some of the listings that were in your close neighborhood, some of the listings that were higher end, some of the clients who you know that have been looking for a house. This is a great way to kind of fill them out without filling them up. So um, you can go out there and kind of drop this in your feed and see who bites on it. You remember, you'll be able to see who likes it. Nine times out of ten people who like it are either going to be looking to buy, maybe looking to sell, or they just like you. You'll find out who those people are really quickly about how many times and who they like and what they like that you post. So great ideas to keep yourself on top of uh, the market. Don't forget also, say for instance you wanted to uh, you know, search for people who were interested in selling. Well, here's the same neighborhood stats. So maybe we can go in here in the Market Insider and we can say, let's copy this link. And let's go back into Facebook and say, are you wondering what home values are like in Allenton? Check out this free list of market values. Let's say take a look at it in real time. Again, we're going to paste in that link. We're going to wait for it to load. Once it's loaded, I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to do a few extra things here. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to rename this. I'm going to say Allenton Home Values. Because Allenton does fall within that zip code bracket. I'm going to make sure that's the thumbnail that I want. And we're going to go from there. And you can already see from that graph if that's real time, the listing price versus the sold price over in September actually crossed paths. So they were spot on in September. October, November, our listing price started to drop and our sales prices started to raise. So it's a good time to sell if you're in Allenton right now. Prices, values, well, actually in that whole zip code are starting to raise. And, uh, you know, the listing price, median listing price is coming down a little bit. So it's a great way to tell people how to uh, work their sales better.
in this particular type of uh, of market that we're working in with that within that particular community. Instead of grabbing Virginia Beach as a whole, reach people where they are, which is within their community that they're actually living in. So if that's a neighborhood you're farming, that's a great idea to do that. Another option is to go right here into the sellers portion of it. Under the sellers tab, you can actually find what their home is worth. So another great idea if you're trying to let's let's just rock this Allenton community today and see what we can get. Maybe I can get some leads off of it. So same uh, same process. We're going to go in here. We're going to copy and paste it. We're going to go into Facebook and say, are you wondering how much money your home could be worth in today's market? Feel free. get your free report here okay so this one I may actually uh, hootsuite this one to get this one to tag in later because uh, I don't want to uh, appear that I'm over posting about a particular subject at one time it looks a little too strong for some people I've already made two posts about that. So I'm going to use my Hootsuite here. I'm going to try to at least. And once it logs in and pulls up, any day now, there we go. And Hootsuite's going to allow me to actually make this post later is what's going to happen. So what we've done here is we've just we've taken the link that I was going to go ahead and, and put in otherwise. Actually, we're going to put that in there. Um, this is where we want to drive them to. We're going to post it to my Facebook account. And um, I'm going to want to choose a thumbnail. That's okay. I can use my big face. Um, and we're just going to go into here. Ooh, I don't know. Hold up. We're going to type in what we want first. You wondering what you could your home's value looks like in today's market. Give me a call. I don't know. One, sorry. Uh, for a free report, please visit my website. Okay, and we're going to come down here. We're going to paste the link in. I'm going to shrink it so it looks nice and pretty. I'm going to wait for the link preview to come up. Put my big mug in there. And we are going to auto schedule it. We're also going to let this go to Twitter as well because, you know, sometimes we can get some great leads off of Twitter. Um, and we're going to auto schedule it. What that's going to do is it's going to find the best time that. Uh, this tweet and that uh, post can go out, and from that point forward, send it out when uh, when the best uh, return on the investment is going to be. So that's just a long and short of how to actually make this work a little better for you. Uh, there's a whole lot more we can do with the site um, when you do have the upgraded pro version. So I recommend getting that and working it to your advantage. I recommend doing things of that nature. Um, I definitely recommend that you get a video posted into your site, and uh, you know that will help you kind of create a little bit more of a uh, unique experience for people when they log in versus just seeing the regular old stuff that everybody has. Um, and 
I think that you should also work your site to the best of your ability. Remember, you're only as good as you can be. You can do only but so much door knocking and cold calling. You really have to make the internet work for you today. Uh, the majority of our clients are searching for homes on the internet first. They're not driving by neighborhoods anymore and wasting gas in cars looking for a home. They're going on the internet. So make sure that your site is relevant. Make sure that your site gives them the information they're looking for and provides them with the item of value that they want. And in return, if you work those customers well, I think you'll have plenty of closed sales or listings uh, this year and the upcoming year to come. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to give me a call. You can contact me at any time at russellbryant73 at gmail.com or you can call me directly at 757-748-4087. If you have any questions or concerns beyond that, don't forget your market leader staff is there and also your Better Homes and Guardian staff are there to help you out should you have any questions. In the meantime, I hope you have a great day. Stay warm and go out there and sell some houses. Thanks. Bye-bye.